Asia is the centre of global trades. Here in Singapore, thousands of ships dock in the ports en route to and from China and other booming Asian economies. But trouble lurks on the horizon. Growth in China is slowing, with new data revealing that the country's manufacturing output has hit a new low. GDP forecasts for both India and China have been revised downwards, and traders report reduced cargo going in and out of China. At Exporters Trade and Export Finance Conference in Singapore, concerns were raised by bankers and traders about the impact of a slowdown on their business. I think in the last five years, when we've seen so much growth, we probably won't see that in the next couple of years. Uh, we are seeing declining import uh, volumes, we're seeing declining export volumes. On a general, more macro level, yes, there is a slowdown in demand, there is certainly pressure on pricing. It seems that one of the key effects of the slowdown in Asia is the downward pressure on the pricing of trade finance debt. I think the most dramatic slowdown is the decline in pricing. We're seeing at least 40 to 60 percent decline in pricing. You know, there's more supply than demand. But despite this fall in pricing, corporates trading in Asia don't believe access to finance, particularly long-term funding, has become any easier. So having money available short term is relatively straightforward, but. Uh, Longer term commitments are, are much more difficult. Indeed, banks might have to rethink the way they finance companies in Asia. Banks simply won't have the balance sheets given these regulations that are coming in to fund long term massive public finance. Where this leads me to is concluding that the capital markets will have a greater role to play. And to a certain extent, perhaps we need to reassess the way that we finance the markets. But compared to the woes suffered in Europe, Many are still optimistic about the opportunities to do business in Asia. China is slowing down, but if you think about where is it slowing down, from a 9% GDP growth to probably a 7% around that number. It's a reduction, but still there is growth. Although China's dominance as a driving force in Asia might be lessening, other regions are now growing in importance. Supply chains are evolving as companies look to source supplies from different markets. In China, the cost is going up, so people are looking at new places like Bangladesh, Vietnam, even going to places like Sri Lanka, where they're sourcing goods from. So I think that is one evolution of supply chain. There are also a number of new, relatively untapped markets in Asia that are beginning to catch the attention of banks. I think Myanmar is one which, which we need to understand, because that has been a growth economy because of sanctions and things. Banks are not there. Once all the things uh, open up, I think that is something which we definitely pick up. For me, Mongolia is the new frontier. It's got a huge amount of natural resource, and to a certain extent, if I was to have a crystal ball, I'd be looking at Mongolia, I don't know, in five, ten years' time, and maybe it's the new Western Australia. Despite concerns about a possible slowdown, the rise of other Asian economies means the region will continue to be a driving force in international trade for some time to come.